Hello again, um, I'm Dr. Shaheen Alani from Detroit, Michigan in the United States. Welcome to another one of these videos that I'm preparing for my patients. Uh, in this video, we are going to be discussing the results of or, uh, what does, or what does the patient need to know about the results of his prostate biopsy. So, whether the patient had a prostate biopsy that was done transperineal or transrectal, all that tissue that is obtained with the prostate biopsy is moved using the, um, um, the cores. That tissue is sent to the pathologist and the pathologist is going to develop a report that goes back to the urologist and the urologist will be discussing that report with the patient. When the patient comes to my clinic, the pieces of information that I'd like to have the patient understand about the results of his pathology are the following. Number one, I'd like him to know what type of cancer he's having in his prostate. Yes, we call them prostate, we call it prostate cancer, but there are different types of prostate cancer. Fortunately, most types of prostate cancer is what we call adenocarcinoma, and that's the type of prostate cancer that is slow growing in about 50% of the patient's dead, and that's the type that we can uh, sometimes watch without treatment, but there are also types of prostate cancer or cancer that we can find on prostate biopsy that are not prostate, that are, did not originate in, from the cells of the, of the prostate and that may have a more aggressive uh, course and would have a, uh, what we call a worse outcome. Treating them is much harder and the chances that the patient is going to be cured from treating those cancers is less. So the type of cancer that we generally call prostate cancer is what we call adenocarcinoma. And that's the type of cancer that originates from the cells that lines the inside of the glands of the prostate. This is more than 90% of the types of histologies that we see with prostate cancer. The second important type is what we call transitional cell carcinoma. Transitional cell carcinoma usually originate in the bladder or the urethra and then extend to the prostate. The treatment in this case is usually um, removal of the bladder plus removal of the prostate because usually the cancer is originally or has originated in the bladder and then extended into the prostate indicating that it is an aggressive type of cancer. And in that population, again, the outcome is much worse than just having the garden variety adenocarcinoma that we usually find when we do a prostate biopsy based on an elevated PSA. The other type of prostate cancer that I think is uh, important to mention or discuss is what we call neuroendocrine prostate cancer. It is a very aggressive uh, type of prostate cancer, has a very high chance of spreading outside the prostate. And unfortunately, most of those patients will need treatment with chemotherapy and their chances of surviving this cancer is maybe 20% or less. So these are the three most important types, adenocarcinoma, transitional cell carcinoma, and neuroendocrine endocrine prostate cancer. Trans, uh, adenocarcinoma constitutes more than 90% of these tumors. Transitional cell carcinoma, maybe 5%, maybe 5 and then 2% or less of prostate cancer tumors are going to be neuroendocrine tumors, which are um, very aggressive again and have a very poor outcome. So this is the first piece of information that I need you to know about your biopsy. The second piece of information that I need you to know about your biopsy or what I'm going to discuss with you is the Gleason score. This is the score that determines how abnormal the cells are in when we compare them to the normal prostate cells. The higher is the Gleason score, the higher is the chance that this cancer could spread outside the prostate and uh, the higher is or the lower is the chance that the patient would be cured from his cancer. Gleason score starts at 6. There used to be a Gleason score 5 and 4, but it's no longer um, used. So it starts at 6. There is a Gleason score 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Gleason score 6 is what we call a low-risk type of prostate cancer. Gleason score 7 is what we call the intermediate risk group of prostate cancer. And Gleason 8, 9, and 10 is the group that we call a high-risk type of prostate cancer. So, now you know the type of prostate cancer, so generally the urologist will say you have adenocarcinoma, Gleason score, whatever, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10, and then the next piece of information is going to be the extension of the involvement of the biopsy by the malignant cells. 
the higher is the volume of the cancer again the worse is the outcome so what you need to know is for example if the urologist took 12 or 13 or 14 cores what percentage what how, what what number of cores were involved in with the cancer and what percentage of those cores were involved with the cancer this is also very very important and then the final piece of information that uh, is important about or to know from the results of the biopsy is what we call laterality is is it on the right side is it on the left side is it on both sides because that helps the urologist and helps you maybe discuss whether one or both sides of the nerves that supply the uh, penis that are responsible for erection could be spared when you have a bilateral disease this means that the urologist will have to be careful on both sides so that he doesn't leave residual disease when you have disease just on the left side then probably the urologist is going or the surgeon is going to try to spare more nerves on the right side so that the chances of having an erection is are, or are higher after doing the surgical procedure so when you describe your disease to me or when you describe your disease after you've met the urologist you should be able to say well i have prostate cancer hopefully it is adenocarcinoma my gleason score is so and so he took 12 cores 50 percent or five of those 12 cores were involved with the cancer and about 50 percent of each core were involved with the cancer and my disease is either just on the left side just on the right side or on both sides these are the pieces of information that you need to know about your prostate biopsy now you have the results of the prostate biopsy your physician discussed those results with you this is the point in time where the physicians where the surgeon is going to start to build up the strategy for treating your prostate cancer with you based on the information that he has from his your PSA score and the pace of the information that he has from your Gleason uh, score so then by using this information, it will put you into a low risk group, which is a group of patients who have Gleason score 6 and a low PSA less than 10. Gleason scores or intermediate risk type of prostate cancer, which is a um, group of patients who have Gleason score 7 and they have a PSA between 10 and 20. And then Gleason score 8, 9, and 10, which puts you in the high risk group. The highest group is also the group of patients whose biopsy before the prostate biopsy or, or whose PSA before the prostate biopsy was um, above 20. So just looking at this um, pathway for treatment and based on the information that we have from uh, the results of the biopsy and from your pre-biopsy PSA, you are going to be either a low risk type of prostate cancer, an intermediate risk type of prostate cancer, or a high risk type of prostate cancer. If you are a low risk type of prostate cancer, most of those patients we can treat with active surveillance. There is a special pathway for active surveillance that I'll be discussing in a future video. And what happens in that group as well is that because the risk of spread of the cancer outside the prostate is very low, we don't need to do any kind of bone scans and we do not need to do any kind of abdominal imaging. If you are in the intermediate risk type of prostate cancer, that's the Gleason 7 group, then this is the group that would benefit, I would say, the most from treatment. This is the group that we generally treat with surgery, with radiation therapy, or with focal therapy in a selected group of patients and in very, very special situations. So this is the intermediate risk to group of prostate cancer. And again, because this group has a large risk chance that the disease would have spread outside the prostate now that we are diagnosing them earlier using the PSA we usually do not obtain a bone scan or a CT scan unless the volume of the disease is very high and we are suspecting that they might actually have the high risk group but we just because of the process of sampling we are finding out that they have an intermediate risk type of prostate cancer what happens if you have a high risk type of prostate cancer this is a I think an unfortunate situation because about 50% of those patients are going to have disease that had spread outside the prostate at the time of diagnosis. The treatment, they would need imaging, they would need staging to uh, with bone scan, CT scan, MRI to make sure that this disease or to understand the extent of their disease because the treatment is different uh, depending on the extension of their disease. Generally, if the imaging is negative, did not show metastasis, and it sounds like the disease is just localized to the prostate, so those patients generally, the best pathway, I think, for their treatment, if they are good candidates for it, is to start with surgery, 
followed by radiation therapy, because that's where we are trying to look to treat, where that's where we're treating the localized disease. When they receive the radiation therapy, if there is, based on the results of the surgery, if there is lymph node involvement, they would also get pelvic radiation plus hormonal ablation, because we are trying to treat uh, the area in the uh, pelvis. And eventually, again, I would think 50% or more than 50% of those patients are going to need to continue on the hormonal ablation long term because their disease is going to uh, present itself and metastasis would show up at a different point in time after their diagnosis with the PSA. Now, in individuals where we do the biopsy, we do uh, the imaging and the imaging shows that this disease had spread to the bones or other parts of the body. It depends on the extension of that involvement of the other parts of the body. If we have what we call a low volume metastatic disease, then I think those patients would benefit from a combination of local therapy, whether it's surgery or radiation therapy, and treatment to the metastatic sites with radiation therapy and hormonal ablation. This is the pathway that probably provides them with the highest chance of disease control and delaying the progression of the disease. Unfortunately, if they have a high volume type of prostate cancer, multiple sites being involved with the metastasis or with the cancer cells, then that group probably are not going, and that's what the studies show, are not going to benefit from um, localized treatment. There is no need to put them through the possible side effects of for example, surgery to remove the prostate, and that's the group that usually goes on hormonal ablation, ablation and they would go on an aggressive type of, of hormonal ablation. So these are the three groups. These are the three uh, different groups of prostate cancer and the different uh, modalities for treatment. And in future videos, I'll be talking about um, surgery, radiation therapy, focal ablation, hormonal ablation, and we'll also talk about metastatic prostate cancer and what's available to treat metastatic prostate cancer in separate episodes. But this is what I wanted to present to you with today uh, about the results of your prostate biopsy. I'm Dr. Shaheen Alani from Detroit, Michigan, and thank you so much for listening.